Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we are back with part two of my visit to the National Association for Amateur Radio, which is located right here in my home state of Connecticut. In the prior video, we got a great tour of W1AW Memorial Station, which is the radio station on the campus of the ARRL. It's a beautiful facility with a lot of great equipment. And in this video, we're going to make some contacts from that facility. And helping me out is going to be Steve Goodgame, who you met at the beginning of the prior video. After we make some contacts, we're going to then head into the headquarters building and see what the ARRL envisions as the future of the amateur radio hobby and what the technology is going to look like. Now, while we're making some contacts here, I want to let you know that I did edit the video a bit for time. We did follow all of the common courtesies and making sure that frequencies were clear before we started transmitting, but I thought it might be more efficient to see the flow of a standard contact versus waiting around for all these things to happen. So it is cut down a bit, but you will get a good context as to how radio contacts work. And without further ado, let's head into the studio where Steve is gonna help me make some contacts over the air. So we are back in Studio 3 and we're back with Steve. And uh, what we're gonna be doing right now is making a call from W1AW here to somebody who's in a park where? Uh, let's see, this person I think is in Oregon. In Oregon, so we're gonna try to go clear across the country here. We're also joined by Gary here and these guys are operating as my control operator. Um, because I am not able to operate on the frequency that we're at with my current license, but because we have uh, licensed amateurs who are authorized there, they are supervising my activity. And we're also very careful to look at the band guide here to make sure that I am authorized in any case to broadcast voice or, sorry, transmit voice over these particular uh, frequencies. So let's give it a shot, see if let's we go. can get in touch. Turn this up a little bit and. And there's a foot pedal down here, right? Yeah, foot pedal down there. Okay. So just, okay. You, what you're gonna do is just key it up and say whiskey one alpha whiskey. This is whiskey one alpha whiskey. We hear you. Say I copy your 58, I have you 59. Okay. Yes. We have you at 59. Thank you, Say thank you, 73. Thank you, 73. So we would log it in, just type mm -hmm. Kilo Bravo Zero PVB, Papa Victor Bravo. He gave us a 58, so hit tab. And then 58, and we and had 59. 59. Hit enter. All right, I got to get this. Boom. That's Locked. pretty. That's pretty easy. So Steve, we just had a contact with somebody in Oregon, yep. um, and so we heard him. I responded to him. He's in a park right now in Oregon. He's in a park. So right? he's set up with you know a battery probably mm -hmm. and a wire in a tree. And and that's it. That's it. And so what did we communicate with him? He he gave us a number. I gave him a number. He what gave you that? a number, which mm -hmm. you know the the Poda app, the Poda website, Parks mm -hmm. on the Air. Um, They've got designators. Mm -hmm. Every park in, in the United States has a designator. It starts with a K, Kilo. Mm -hmm. And so that's his park designator. So when you log it, he's going to log his contacts from that park. And he's, it takes 10 contacts to activate the park. Okay. So, you know, you're one of his 10. Mm -hmm. So you're going to help have him have, have made that activation. And we gave him a signal report? As yeah, to the signal report, he gave you a 5 and 8, which means mm -hmm. you're, you're coming in really well. He can copy mm -hmm. you really well. We yep. gave him a 5 and 9. Mm -hmm which is the same thing, five and nine being the top, and mm -hmm. five and one as far as five. And that's kind of a subjective thing. It's based kind of on a subjective mm -hmm. thing, and you'll, you'll learn that that changes. Mm -hmm. During contests, it seems everybody's a 59 or a five and nine, <laughs> <laughs> um, because it's just that fast. You know, it, you notice the, the program defaulted to five, nine on there. You had to change it, so, right. because a lot of contest loggers do that. And how much power did, did it take for us to reach in, in Oregon? So we, we put out about 800 watts. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean it necessarily took all 800 watts mm -hmm. to get there. We're putting out 800 watts. The odds are he's only putting out 100 watts or so. And that's about he, what I can do at my house, about 100 watts. Yeah. So Maybe even less, right? Yeah, yeah. and he may mm -hmm. be doing less. Now, he mm -hmm. didn't say he was QRP, but a lot mm -hmm. of times, you know, my daughter and I will do parks on the air, and mm -hmm. we run 10 watts mm -hmm. or 20 watts. And it's all a matter of just the it's conditions the, of, of the band at the time. Or just what and, you feel like doing. Mm -hmm. You know, the smaller the radio, you know, the more portable it is. Right. The, trade-off is a lot of times there's less power to it. 
and getting contacted by this station is a pretty that's big a big deal, deal. so right. you know that's why he's like well whiskey one alpha whiskey thank mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. you know because a lot of people out there have never worked whiskey one alpha whiskey so it's kind of a cool I'm, my first one was pretty cool and it wasn't even here actually it was a, a portable station that okay. was using the whiskey one alpha whiskey call sign mm -hmm. and i was like it's still pretty yeah, pretty yeah. epic that's pretty neat so Steve, now we're going to try to contact somebody over overseas in Europe, maybe. Overseas in Europe. So we're going to take this uh, control here for the antenna that is outside. Okay. I'm going to drop it right there. We just need to wait for the antenna to move in that direction. Yep. So it'll it'll slowly turn. And this is a Yagi antenna, which means it's directional. It's, yeah, it's so directional. So we were pointed towards Oregon before. Now we're pointing. Now we're towards pointing towards towards Europe. So okay. Taking a rifle and aiming. <laughs> right. You so got to kind of get it in the right spot. Now right. the interesting is there are times you can work stations off the other sides of the beam. You know, mm -hmm. For example, we've worked on FT8 Thailand off the side of a beam. Mm -hmm. But, but generally, this, it's, it's kind of that rifle shot. Right. Where it's got to be directional and really dialed if, in. If the band is open, we're going to be booming into, into Europe. Into Europe. Okay. All so, right. So now it looks like we're pretty much locked in. So now the trick is we'll find an empty frequency. So we'll turn our volume back up here. All right. And and do we, do we, should we ask if the frequency is Yeah, we'll ask if it's in So that typically mm -hmm. we'll, you know, I'm going to tune off of where he is because, well, and I'll let you turn that. This mm -hmm. But clear, right? while, while we can't hear him anymore, that doesn't mean other stations, we know he's there. So the right. play thing to do would be to go move Something off frequency yeah. somewhere. So we'll say like 122 here. And it sounds pretty empty. So yep. generally listen for a minute, make sure you don't hear anybody, and then key up and ask once or twice if the frequency's in use. And then I normally say nothing heard, and then I just call, okay. start calling CQ. All right. Was a, Nothing heard. Whiskey One Alpha Whiskey CQ CQ CQ. This is with Whiskey One Alpha Whiskey CQ. Now, when you first start calling, a lot of times it's beneficial to make that CQ call long. It's really long because people that are tuning, tuning up and down in. like we were, mm -hmm. you want them to stumble across it and find that. So we'll do a little longer on the next one. So yeah, one. this dude kind of go for you know 10, 15 seconds okay. to stop and listen. CQ CQ CQ. This is Whiskey One Alpha Whiskey CQ CQ. This is Whiskey One Alpha Whiskey calling CQ CQ CQ. This is Whiskey One Alpha Whiskey calling CQ. That'll do it. Yep. And There's then, no right or wrong way to do it. Just so say it. No, that's yep. it. Echo X-ray Mexico. Mexico. Station ending X-ray Mexico. This is Whiskey One Alpha Whiskey. Whiskey. Can you please repeat your call sign? So call him back and give him your signal port, which is probably 59 again. Okay. SQ5. Five. Five. Yep. SQ5, Echo, Echo X-ray Mexico. Mexico. This is Whiskey 1 Alpha Whiskey. You're coming in 5-9. Five, 5-9, nine. Five, nine, nine, Sugar Queen 5, can you uh, tell us where you're located? Queen Five, Echo X-ray Mexico. I'm located near Warsaw. Near Warsaw, the capital. Near Warsaw. Wow. Tell him. Yeah, tell him. Yeah, tell him again. You're his first. Thank you. You are my first DX. I am in Connecticut, in the United States. Whiskey One Alpha Whiskey. Thank you very much. Seventy-three. Whiskey One Alpha is clear. Go ahead and log in. Yeah, that's right. That's a good one, huh? That's so a good one. So, so we reached all the way to uh, all the way to Poland. All the way to Poland to that. So now we're going to go back to our log here. And yeah, if you, if we were to stay here, which you're we're welcome to if you mm -hmm. want to, the pile up would start now because he's going to spot you. Yeah, and now everyone's going to be piling and in. And, uh, and yeah, the important thing is, like I told my kid when she started, it's your pile up. So mm -hmm. you take as however much time you want to to talk to the people you want to have a conversation with. Right. Pile. You know, it's contest weekends are a little different, but. Mm -hmm. When you're just on the air, if right. you want to talk to him, talk to him. Pretty cool. Pretty neat. So. And then this, again, is something, if you have the right antenna at your home, you can yep. do this from home. And, uh, and just to remind you, if you're a licensed amateur, you're just up the street, so you're welcome to come operate. Any licensed amateur can come operate the station. Excellent. So. And, if, and if you're here without, a, without someone, so if I'm a technician here, I can operate on technician frequencies, yeah. unless I have a control operator with Unless you have a control me. operator with you to right. operate. So on the screen here is the log of every contact that's been made through this station today. Gary, you've been here for a good chunk of the day. How far has, has, have we reached? Have we gone beyond Poland? We've gone beyond Poland on mm -hmm. FT8, mm -hmm. which is also on 17 meters. Right. We reached Indonesia. Wow. 
So we had Germany, yep. Ireland, yep. Indonesia. Wow. So it had to be a contact probably what, over the North Pole, I think, on FDA. Yeah, you know, probably. To right, Indonesia. to get over there. Yeah, yeah, so pretty much anywhere you can yeah. reach from here. So Pretty cool. Yeah. Now, Steve, um, this is the current of ham radio, right? We've got an FT8 station, we've got our microphone, we've got our radio. This one's a little fancier than the one I have. This but is a little <laughs> fancier than the one I have too. So. <laughs> but it's still like, you know, it's, it's what people can do now. But there's, you know, this is a, a changing hobby constantly. And I know at the headquarters building, there's something new happening. There's right? something new happening and we're going to go over there and check it out because it's it looks entirely different than W1AW does. All right, let's head over there. Let's go. All right, so so we are. This is the headquarters building. This, this is, is separate it. from W1AW. Yeah, so W1AW is the station over yep. here, and mm -hmm. then headquarters is here, where we have the administrative side of it, mm -hmm. and that W1HQ station, along with some other cool stuff like and, the lab. And the magazine that ham operators get is published out of here as well. It is published out of here as well. All the publications. All the publications are out of here. How many people work here? Eighty-four-ish. Wow, it's a pretty sizable operation. So yeah, yep. It's, a lot of people in Connecticut probably don't even know it's they here. Don't, yeah, a lot yeah. of people don't realize it's in their backyard. Yeah, and, so. and for some of the people around the neighborhood to hear it literally in their backyard. Yeah, we're, we're, a, well, <laughs> it didn't used to be that way though. Right. You know, this used to be a lot of empty land. Okay, and, and what got built up around it. And then slowly yeah. over time, houses showed up and. Yeah. Well, they they, sprung they up. live next to antennas. Yeah, so. that's okay. All right, let's head in and see what uh, we have inside. Let's go. All right, so we're in the lobby here. I just thought it was helpful to show people some of the publications that come out of here, right? It's, it's, it's training books. There's antenna books. There's so. a little bit of everything book. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have the license manuals mm -hmm. with the technician, the general, and the extra. Um, the antenna book, which is always a popular one. Um, and then some of the, you know, more technical stuff like, Grounding and bonding. Here's a book on portable operating, which you just contacted the guy who was operating portable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so where are we now? So we're in the AWRL lab. Um, this is where it's kind of the guts of the technical part. This is where they do the product testing. Mm -hmm. Product review stuff is done here. Mm -hmm. For the magazine. For the magazine. Mm -hmm. You know, they go through a very strenuous review process. You know, as YouTube people, you know, it's, sometimes the review process for us is a little different, but they get to the nitty gritty. And you, you have know, a very technical audience. Very that wants technical to know audience. Every they want to know. Every little speck that's there, and that's what they test it all. So I have to say, this is much cleaner and much more organized than my lab is. <laughs> mine, mine too. I'm still moving into mine. So <laughs> this is what I refer to. You know, this is my term. I call yeah. it the time tunnel. I feel like every time I come through here, you're kind of progressing from, you know, older to more modern, and then all of a sudden we end up coming out in the future or what our vision of the future of ham radio is going to look like. As far as this vintage radio equipment is concerned, this, you get a lot of this stuff in, I'm guessing, from people yeah. that pass on or just families that want to A lot of families it. donate yeah. it. Yeah. Um, they're, you know, and we try to rotate through it to mm -hmm. put different stuff on display. And some of it's just really cool. Some of it's really old. Some of it's got other you know, sentimental value to people or whatever. And a lot of it, I guess, is still working. Like the, uh, Yeah, it, I imagine most of it still works. Mm. You know, I mean, we even have some CW bugs and keys in here, those work. I mean, right. You know, we can plug those in and get on the air with those today if we wanted to. And what's amazing is how much equipment you used to need to do this. Yeah. And what my entry point in was just a little USB dongle that I plug into a Raspberry Pi. Things have changed a lot, haven't they? Yeah, well, I mean, a receiver back then was 50, 60, 70 pounds. Right. And yours weighs ounces. Right. And, and can receive a whole lot more than that. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. So it's, it's and it's constantly evolving. That's what I guess we people love about it. So let's see that evolution. Let's, and, go, uh, let's go check out the future. Yeah. So now this is what we envision to potentially be the future, but it's here now, right? It's here now. So yeah. this is W1HQ, and it's just coming online. Um, it used to be, well, it looked like a lot like Grandpa's basement. Yeah. And now this is kind of the vision of the future and how radio is, is, is going to be. So, you know, looking around, everything's run off of computers and monitors. You'll notice there are no radios on tables, no microphones, because everything's going to be controlled through the computer. We still have radios in the room, in, in the two racks, but this also allows us the ability to be able to operate it remotely. You know, for example, we have a staff member right now at the air show in Oshkosh, and he's demonstrating that remote capability by remoting in and showing pilots at the air show how to do that. And, you, and in this case, you're not remoting into a computer. You can actually remote in and control the radio remotely. Yes, so you're I actually, see you have, a, I mean, there's probably different types of bit radios available right now. The smart SDR DAX is what? Yeah, so we're actually remoting into the Flex, and that's a Flex 6400. And uh -huh. that, that radio is a complete software-defined radio, and so that's what you're actually remoting into. You're not remoting into like a Raspberry Pi. Right, and just going, controlling the screen. You're actually you're, you're actually gaining access to that radio and be able to use it like it was sitting on your desk. Yeah, and you know, a nice headset, and you're on the air. 
and with voice and with data, whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do, yeah. And when we look at this device inside of this rack here, this is a full functioning amateur radio just with no controls on it because it's all controlled through the yeah. through the computer yep. interface. Now, I mean, they do have options for the people that like to turn the knobs, yep. but I mean, that's this to me is a nice, clean looking, no cable mess anywhere. This is the way I think radio is going to go. And some people might say this is not how it's supposed to be because you see, you need to build your rig and get your antennas up. But some people are in areas where they can't access things or perhaps they're located too far away from anywhere that they can transmit to other people yeah. easily, reliably. This is something that you could envision having a, a data center set up that people could just log into, I guess. Right? Yeah, and I mean, think in terms of people that, you know, maybe they live in a retirement home or an apartment. They can't have those, those abilities. But with a laptop and a headset, you can still be on the air and operating. So, so, and especially for somebody who maybe moves or downsizes, they yeah. end up in an HOA, they suddenly lose the ability to interact with yeah. a hobby. Now you, yep. could, you could house one of these things somewhere else, maybe a local club, maybe a, a service could do it for you, mm -hmm. and you could log in remotely and just yep. do everything you were doing before. That's it. And so, you know, we've got full control of antenna rotors with the same system that we had over across the parking mm -hmm. lot at W1AW. It's still Green Heron, so you just drag and it points. And you can do the same thing from your home as well. Well, Steve, first of all, thank you for a great tour today. We got a lot in. I think we've never killed a battery in a memory card on one of these trips before, so we've got a lot of footage to go through. <laughs> Score. <laughs> Score, exactly. And I think we probably will have to come back because this is just the tip of the iceberg, right? It is indeed. Yeah, you'll definitely have to come back. There's, there's a lot to see, and there are a lot of things here that we didn't get to touch on that, you know, it's an important part of what we do. And when we think about education and outreach, you're working with educators, right? We are. You know, as you saw, we have a group of teachers here from all over the country this week. And they're learning to take wireless technology and amateur radio back into their classroom. And we're, we're aiming to host up to 25 of these a year around the country at different places. And basically, I equip them with the knowledge and a lot of the gear they need to take this and go back to their, their classroom with it. And it's completely paid by donors. Oh, that's excellent. So it's a lot of nonprofit advocacy it, work here it on is. top it's, of the... Uh... You know, it's one of my main goals is getting more youth and more younger people involved in the hobby, and mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer that one of the best ways to do that is through schools and through teachers. And you're a, a teacher yourself. So. I am. I just left the classroom after 21 years mm -hmm. to come do this, and right. this is kind of a, a passion, I guess. And one of the things you told me is that people can come here and just visit the, the uh, station over there and start broadcasting. So Transmitting. Transmitting. Um, and anyone can just come and transmit if they want, right? So yep. Anybody, you know, if, if you're licensed, you can come transmit within your privileges mm -hmm. if you're not. We have volunteers over here that will be happy to you know, help get you on the air and service your control operator. So if someone has a kid who wants to try it out, just head on over. And, head on over and, yeah. and you know, I'll run across the parking lot. If, if there's a kid that wants to get on the air, I'll come take care of it. Excellent. So. And you get a cool certificate. Too, and you get a cool certificate. Speaking of which. I get my own too. You get your own certificate. Right. Very cool. Because I transmitted. You operated and, and that's an impressive contact. You made contact with Poland. Yeah. It was so. pretty cool. It's not bad. I've had a lot of good luck in this hobby so far. Like my so. first shot of everything has usually been pretty good. Yeah. So. You're, you're on a roll. So keep rolling with it. Excellent. Well, thank so. you very much. I am thank sure you. we'll be back again in the future. And uh, thank you all for watching. And let me know what you would like to see next as I explore amateur radio further. This channel is brought to you by the Live TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.